What's good family, DeAndre Douglas here, back with another video. Today's video is about something that I struggled with and still somewhat struggle with, religious narcissists. Yes, they exist. Shocking. Family, I assume if somebody speaks of Jesus Christ, if they mention Jesus Christ, if I hear them give thanks to Jesus Christ, I just automatically assume, oh, you you believe in God. Family, not always. It could definitely be a friend. And I should have known because we have fake pastors. We have pastors that lead whole congregations, sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands of people who preach the word of God but do not serve God, at least not the most high God of Israel. So, in my personal experience, I have, I have, mixed, I have ages because that's how confused this person had me. I looked up to this person, I respected this person, I wanted to be like this person. That ass. Okay, the number one thing is to remember that they are a covert. So if you don't know what a covert is, it's a narcissist who plays the pity card, it's a narcissist who won't necessarily embarrass you or shame you in public. Um, good analogy I have, Jezebel is an overt narcissistic spirit. Ahab is a covert narcissistic spirit. 99% um, of the time, they have to use either money or like their laughter, their charm. And they get you comfortable, and once they get you comfortable, they start slowly tearing you down. In my situation, in my case, I can't say this person's name, but this is a very powerful person in the community and financially, and I'm positive he could sue me, and I'm positive he would sue me. So I will not say this person's name or their direct relationship to me. I will speak of the work relationship and I'll let you guys discern the rest. So this man owns a business, this man owns a like $200,000, $300,000 home, multiple vehicles. This man has it all. Beautiful wife, a son, and so when this person came into my life, I'm always hesitant anytime anyone comes into my life just because, and if you're a chosen one, you know this too, you've had so many people let you down, you've had so many people set you up, you've had so many people just be dishonest to you to the point where you don't trust people, for lack of a better word. If you're a chosen one, I'm 100% positive, like, you'd rather pray for someone and love someone at a distance than to allow them into your close personal space inner circle without 100% vetting them and knowing they are who they say they are. Family, I hate these glasses. I hate glasses, period. So when you see me with the glasses on, you know Demandre about to go deep. Alright, number one, this person, when I first started working for them, they would overpay me for jobs and they would over. Um, what's the word? Um, uh, Jesus help me. They would over glorify anything I did. Like anything I did, oh man, man you did a good ass job. I've never had someone do this this well, this, that, and the third. And again, they'll overpay you. Um, an example would be this person might ask you to go to the store for them, and they'll give you more than enough. And if you're a child of God, you're going to come back with your change, and they're going to be like, oh, keep the change. But it won't be like five, six dollars. It may be twenty, thirty dollars. And you're just like, whoa. You know, and you're just like, I just want to go get you a pack of cigarettes or something. It will be showering you with praise. 
The love bomb will be thick. The love bomb will be much deeper with a covert narcissist than it is with an overt narcissist. I assure you, because they they've perfected it. They've perfected it. Okay. After they do that and you start to get comfortable, they're going to do the opposite of that. And that is breadcrumbing you and criticizing you. So in the beginning of the relationship, like relationship, friendship, workship, whatever type of ship you guys are on together, it will be praise and it will be prosperity. And you will be just doing what you consider to be. You're going to do a good job anyway. You're going to do the best job you can do. Like, going to do anything that you do to the best of your abilities it's just in your heart in your soul to do so and you like to stand by the quality of work and that's because you represent God and God does not will not allow you to make him look bad so he's going to give you the energy and the knowledge necessary to do certain jobs there will be times you're at jobs and you figure out problems that people have been there years didn't know how to figure out, or there will be times that people with way more knowledge than you in a certain area will be bested by you. You're not doing it on purpose, you're not being malicious, you're not trying to make anyone look bad. If there's a problem, you find the solution. This is what we do as chosen ones, period. So, I would do the same job and I would get less and less pay. And I didn't want to question it simply because I've been paid very well for doing little things. So, you know, the fact that I did something and I felt like I should get paid more for it, I let it slide. Family, eventually it got to the point where I'm like, I just work for myself. <laughs> I can't believe I got out of bed for this. Like, I borderline insulted in what you've given me for this knowing what I've made in the past for doing the same thing so they want you to question yourself they want you to doubt yourself and they will say oh they will have some type of excuse or some type of reason why you weren't compensated like you were in the past they're definitely not going to tell you the truth just it's like breaking the game this is the whole point of chess I'm not going to tell you I'm moving this piece over here to distract you while I slap you with this other piece. It's just, it is what it is. Um, they're going to gaslight you. They may say things like, oh, last time you did it this way. And you're thinking to yourself, I, I thought I did it the exact same way. No, 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 last time you did it in 30 minutes. This time it took you 45 when in reality, you did it at about the same time, give or take five minutes, not enough time to warrant a discussion for it. Um, another example will be, they will see you using an item, and then they will hide that item from you. And then they will accuse you of misplacing, or losing, or even worse, stealing the item. If this happens to you at a job or a business, you need to start looking for another job immediately. Preferably work for yourself because you're supposed to be working for God anyway. I would suggest that we do things and I would get either ignored or I would get told no. Only for my same exact suggestion to be brought up by this person like they came up with the idea. And if I tried to even say that's what I was saying, I would get cut off, I would get shut down, I would get sent away. And then this person would take the credit and the praise for my thoughts. I'd be pissed, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'd be pissed. I'd be, whatever, I'm getting paid, whatever. Um, oh, the, a religious narcissist will thank God any time something they want to happen happens but they will always complain and curse and belittle others anytime something is not going their way they will rarely ever be in the midst of a problem and say please jesus help me it will always only be if 
I received something or I accomplished something or I finished the job. Man, thank God we did that. But the whole time, like, they will curse. They will play the pity party. Woe is me. It will be the fault of the project or another person. Meanwhile, the whole time we're doing the project, I'm like, please, all right, Jesus, what's the next step? Okay, God, I don't know what to do. This is not fitting. Or this doesn't make sense. Or I'm, every step of the way, I'm asking God because I need to do the best job I can. And the job was so important that if you made a mistake, it could cost somebody their life. So I, I had to seek God in order to do a good job. And I could not lean on my own understanding because the technology and the things that we deal with nowadays is evolving so rapidly that um, you've seen this, you might see an item in the store, two items look super similar and they have one digit difference in their serial number. Or, um, I'm going to give a really, really good analogy. Um, it's like when you're buying a computer, you'll have two computers that look exactly the same on the outside, but on the inside, one processor will be better than the other, or one processor might have more RAM. Same thing, oh, perfect example, like with the Samsung phones. You have an S23 and you have an A23. You have a S54 and an A54. They look identical. However, the cameras inside of the S series are better. The processors are better. It's just a way better phone. It's a flagship phone versus a budget phone. But they make them look identical so that those who just don't have the budget for the nicer phone feel like they're still flaunting the new hotness. Kudos to Samsung. Smart idea. So you just have to be very careful when you're working. If you're working with technology of any kind, because it's expensive and it's nuanced. Um, so yeah, that was number two. The number one is they will do praise and prosperity. They will overpay you and they will overpraise you for whatever it is that you're doing. And then on the flip side, once they've reeled you in, once you get comfortable with this person, they will criticize you and they will breadcrumb you. And breadcrumbing is just, I'm not going to give you the whole loaf. I'm going to give you half the loaf. Then I'm going to give you a quarter of the loaf. And then eventually I'm just going to give you the crumbs. And because you're so comfortable with the amount of money you're making or this person or whatever the situation is that you feel like you need them in your life, even though they're giving you the bare minimum, you'll think about the times when they gave you more, you'll think about the praise, and you're really chasing the past. Okay? Um, number two is definitely, like I said, they will only praise God, quote-unquote, when something successful happens. When they get a big contract, when they get a lot of money, when the projects gets completed, it's oh thank God. However, the whole duration during the project, they're cursing people out. They're telling people they're not shit. They are woe is me, pity. Um, my money is tight. I always have to pay for this. I always have to pay for that. Number three, they will gaslight you. They will. So gaslighting is a term that came from um, the early 1900s, maybe even 1800s, but it's from a while back and what happened was there was a married couple and the husband would slowly dim the light of a lamp that was in his home and I'm showing on kerosene gas, well kerosene oil gas. and. Every day he would slowly dim the light, dim the light, and his wife would say, you know, this light is getting dim. And he would tell her, no, you know, your eyes are getting bad, you're tired, you're sleepy, you're lazy. He pretty much drove this woman crazy by making her think that there was a deficiency in herself, that there was a deficiency in her mind that 
everything was completely the same. However, covertly, he was manipulating a situation. He was creating a situation that made her question her own sanity. That is the simplest definition I can give of gaslighting. When someone creates a situation that makes you question your own sanity, um, and you, you'll be surprised, like, you'll be surprised. Spouses do this, children do this, co-workers do this, um, they will do whatever to sabotage you because as a child of God, peace is your number one goal, your number one objective. Like, I have been dead broke, and if I had peace, I felt like I was a millionaire. And I've had a lot of money in no peace and felt like I was dead broke. Because your peace is what allows you to communicate effectively with God. Your peace is what allows you your discernment to know what you need to do, how you need to be moving. And if you have no peace, you can't seek God because your mind is just always on another problem. It's on the kids, it's on the job, it's on the spouse, it's on whatever bill. It's And then by the end of the day, you just want brain-numbing television, which is then going to feed you more fear or just pure entertainment to where you're just zoned out. It blows my mind to see the photos of people watching TV and on their phone. A lot of people who are not conscious, they, they don't realize it. They look like this. Now, in your mind, I don't know what's going on in your mind. But I know for a fact, you're not here. You're not present. You're gone. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're thinking about. But it looks really crazy and that's the effect of the black mirror the phones the television they're just black mirrors black mirrors are just portals so when you turn on even right now you're tuned into a portal giving you knowledge about spiritual warfare you have just you're here with me you're not here by accident it is on purpose if you are watching this video i don't care if you're a child of god or a narcissist you have warfare being worked against you by a religious covert narcissist. This person will keep Bibles, they will they will do things that you assume Christians do to make you think that they are a Christian. However, anytime they can, they will be destroying someone. Little by little, slowly but surely. They are dangerous. They are way more dangerous than Jezebel or Leviathan or any of the other spirits because they are Delilah. Delilah is um, Samson and Delilah from the Bible. Acts like a good woman, is the best wife you can have. This person will be the best co-worker, best boss, best spouse, best man, best woman that you ever met in your life initially. And once you give your heart to them completely or you let your guard down completely, this person will find out what makes you tick, what makes you move, what motivates you. And they will use it against you, just like Delilah did Samson. Once she found out that his power came from his hair, she told the ops, and you know the rest from there. If you don't, I highly recommend you go watch that story. There's movies about it, but the best place to learn about it is in the Word of God. I prefer you to read the King James Version. However, read the Bible. Just read it, okay? You have to know these things for yourself. So, I want to recap because we're moving fast and there's a lot of information being said. If you need to, watch this twice. Number one, they will overpraise you, they will overpay you, and eventually they will flip it and they will over criticize you and they will breadcrumb you. Okay, that's really two, but I digress. Um, number two, they will 
only praise God when it's convenient for them and they will do it publicly. They will say it out loud. They want to be heard. They want to be seen because they want you and the people around you to think, oh, he's a Christian or she's a Christian. And that way, whenever they do do what they do in the long run, when things go south, it's easier for them to blame other people because people will give them the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, this person is generous, this person is kind, this person is a man or a woman of God, so if there's a conflict anywhere, it's got to be you. Okay? Be careful. Number three, the gaslighting. Eventually, they will start to gaslight you. They will start to gaslight you. This is straight from the narc plate. They have to do this. They will do this. Again, the war is for your mind. The war is for your mind. Alright, number four. They will mimic you. They will mimic you. I mentioned this earlier, but they will steal your ideas and claim your ideas as their own. They will dress like you. They will keep again. This man is worth way more money than I'm worth. I have a nice little mid-rise in Atlanta. And perfect example. We went and met up with another business owner. And he was talking about how this, and this person was actually an artist. This person was a legit rapper. He used to play basketball in college and he got hurt and he turned rapper. I'll let you try to Google that, figure that out yourself. I cannot speak these people's names because again, this is how the game works. So this is a prominent person. He stays in a nice house too. And we're discussing the project, we're discussing what he wants done and how he wants it done. And my boss is like, I thought you, when did you get this place? I thought you stayed in Atlanta. And he's like, um, yeah, it just didn't make sense to be paying two, three thousand dollars for a tiny cube downtown when I could pay that same amount and be in a home with land. And my boss is like, that's the same thing I said. I don't know why he living downtown. He's staying some mid-rise downtown paying high-ass rent for that small-ass cube. And I'm just like, bro, like... How I get involved in this, like, I'm not, I'm sitting here, I'm the help, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying nothing. I am literally the do boy for the owner. Like, I tell the other employees, the owner said this, or I go get the owner's coffee, or I go do stuff for the owner's wife. Why you got shit on me, and I'm not doing anything. I'm just literally just standing here, just standing here with my earbud in, listening to music, just waiting on you to tell me what to do. That's things a covert narc would do. And if you try to justify whatever they are criticizing you for, or if you try to defend yourself, you will be punished. Period. You will be punished. And the punishment won't be uh, outright, that's stupid, or you're crazy, la la la. They won't say nothing. 